Boom, what's up everyone? Welcome to Simulation. I'm your host, Alan Sakyan. We are at the Transformative Technologies Conference and holy cow, we are learning about amazing people, amazing companies. We are now sitting down with Dr. Pablo Paredes. Hello. Hey, nice to meet you, Alan. Thank you for coming on to the show. My I really, pleasure. really appreciate it. Thank you. An instructor in radiology. Yep. Psychiatry. Psychiatry. And population health. And population health yeah. at Stanford mm. University. Yeah. Okay, radiology, psychiatry, and population yeah. health. Right. This is going to be such a cool conversation. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to it. Okay, so maybe and yeah. before we yeah. get to the, the, the thesis and cores of your yeah. work, sure. tell us about your life. You know, Who are you? How did you get to where yeah, you're yeah, at? To where today? I am. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm going to try to make a long story short. Um, the reason I'm here, I would say, is because I actually, like, you know, have a family member who suffers from a mental disorder and it took a long time in South America to find some kind of like relief um, decades uh, and um, at one point in my whole like uh, history of like dealing with this thing I was able to discover cognitive behavioral therapy and a bunch of other like very like you know empirically driven uh, techniques that helped relieve some of the problems but never solve them and uh, ever since I've been like trying to understand how can I do something as an engineer to solve this problem. What was the ailment? Uh, obsessive compulsive obsessive disorder. Compulsive. Yeah so at the end of the day the idea is to you know find the right dis uh, diagnostics and provide the right treatment at the time. Making the long story short in part also because I had to like you know I had uh, I was an entrepreneur and Ecuador sadly tanked in the 2000 I had to like get out of there I studied it with a Fulbright scholarship at Georgia Tech and then I had to go back I worked in Ecuador in Brazil but at one point I decided you know what I'm spending all my free time researching this topic of like mental <laughs> health and, like literally wow. and my own money on top of my career which I was doing really good and I really enjoyed as business manager but I decided to become a scientist so I yes. quit and I, been, I came to Berkeley I did my PhD in computer science and nice. uh, I focused on mental health technology from day one um, now I'm more into the world of what's called precision health so mm -hmm. I did a postdoc here at Stanford and the people from the med in computer science but the people from the, the med school are creating a new center that's called the precision health and integrated diagnostics and precision health is not precision medicine. I want to make sure that that's understood. Precision medicine is how do I measure exactly what's going on in you mm -hmm. to, s to solve some problem. Mm -hmm. Precision health is how do I measure you being healthy and keep you that way. Mm -hmm. So medicine is to fix and health is to keep, to keep you healthy. going strong. Okay. And that's yes. what I want to do. So I don't, I, I'm, I'm still focused on mental health, but I, what I want is people to never fall sick. Of yeah, mental. yes. No. So, not so to get rid of the yeah. pathologies even before they start and to pre be predictive yes. in, in health. Predictive and uh, proactive. And proactive. Yes, yes. Both. Now, what, how did the story with your family member, mm -hmm. where, yeah. did, where did that go? Yeah. Because we just, yeah. we just had Bashar yeah. on the yeah. show. Oh, okay. And Bashar was saying that mm -hmm. he has uh, yeah. in his, in his uh, mm -hmm. neuroscience yeah. lab that they have uh, yeah, magnetic CMS. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's but getting much CD. better. Yeah, it's better. It's getting better. I think we're getting close to much better treatment, and I hope it will be like uh, sooner rather than later that we find a, a, a better treatment. Right now, it's just more of the same. In South America, we have a different, uh, you know, uh, level of advancement. But I'm very, I'm paying a lot of attention to TMS yes. and also yes. to ketamine research that other researchers yeah, are doing yeah, too. Both, too. Both are yeah. very interesting. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Now, okay. So um, radiology, psychiatry, yeah, public yeah, health. Right. So now, as you as you finish, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, you were doing it was it was yeah. post post doc at, yeah. at yeah. Stanford. Right. As you're finishing, yeah. how did yeah how yeah. did you decide yeah. to do instructing and yeah. also right? Yeah, so so I mean, in reality, I I, I do research. Uh, the instructor is just a label for you know a very junior faculty level. So I have my own lab. I got like a small startup package to work on it and I have uh, students working with me and even a postdoc working with me. And the whole purpose is to like work in this core problem of like how do we keep you healthy for as long as possible. So mm -hmm. I'm fascinated with the questions uh, around how do we use interaction between the environment and the individual, because I am actually a human computer interaction uh, researcher. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what I want to do is, how do we transform the 
wild, the new wild into like something that can help. And by, by the new wild, I mean buildings. Like 90% of us spend, um, I'm sorry, uh, we spend 90% of our time in buildings. Uh, when we're or awake. Cars. When we're awake. We're, yeah. and, and sleeping, both. Like, you know, sleeping oh yeah, buildings. because sleeping so or in yeah. buildings. <laughs> so both, we spend like too much time. Too much those. time in buildings, yeah. Or I don't cars, know if yeah. it's too much time. I, you know, I used to think that it was too much time. I, I just dropped it too much and I'm like, well, that's what it is. That's what it is. That's what it is. This is our new environment. It's our new, e even yeah. though there's so much yeah. pointing towards forest bathing and nature oh, bathing. Oh, there's many yes. positive aspects of going outdoors yes. and people should do that and we could keep trying to recover that lost terrain. But 90% yeah, exactly. is a yeah. sizable number. Yeah. We spend a lot of time indoors and I think we should take that and instead of fighting it, like, okay, how do we transform the environment, the environment such yeah. that it really can benefit our mind and our body. And this speaks about like the transition yeah. from the cubicle right. to the transition to these opener yeah, spaces. Yeah, well, there's the many variations. Space. I think we still need to do a lot of like more hardcore research yeah. on the way that we design furniture, the way that we design yeah. peripherals, the way that we design architecture, the way that we design even like materials and floors and things in order to like not only measure variables like, you know, productivity and comfort. I think those are not enough. We should be measuring pro variables of well-being as well. Interesting. No, okay. You just mm -hmm. list so many variables. Yeah. You're making yeah. my mind go everywhere. <laughs> I love it. So, okay, let's take an example. Yeah. So, when you want to, when you see a sp like a building, how do you architect mm. a building yeah. to optimize for well-being? Yeah. Well, right now we actually have a, a very interesting. I'm part of a project with Professor James Landay from CS and Professor Sarah. Um, Blinton from the civil engineering department, and we're discussing what does that mean? How do you architect? Do we have to look at the windows, how the windows let propagate light from outdoors? Mm -hmm. Do we have to look at the temperature? Because now we basically have all fake temperature everywhere. Mm. Do we have to look at perhaps the type of like emblems and colors that surround us so that produce you know, some kind of meaning? Do we have to look maybe at other variables that have to do with the materials and how they, how toxic they are or not toxic? At the end of the day, I think the, the, the truth is that we don't really know enough. I think architecture has a tradition of like uh, focus on aesthetics and beauty and that's already a very good principle to like do something that's meaningful, but it's not enough. I think there's not enough core science to understand, well, if I change the window size or the openings or whatever, how much does that affect the amount of stress that I have? How much does that affect? We haven't measured it. And that's exactly what we're doing right now. We're trying to measure, mm -hmm. trying to understand. In my lab, I'm more focused on the furniture itself. On the furniture? Yeah, I'm very interested in furniture. Have you yeah. seen yeah. that? Have you seen that crazy desk that some Silicon Valley company is making where you, it's like a dent, it's like you're at a dentist's office. <laughs> and it goes, like, it goes like back <laughs> and you can work like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I've it's seen like, very creative things and I think we have to keep producing new stuff. I think that's yeah. very cool. I've been looking a lot at the traditional sit stand desk lately, yeah. like studying it. And it turns out that, you know, most of the new deployments that you see out there of new offices, brings with them like the sit stand desks with the hope that people will be like more like you know active and the, the, those are the desks where the you ones that press. you press the button go up and down and some are more or less fancy system. than that but essentially yeah. the same yes, thing yes. sadly you know the the, the literature shows that 70 percent of those desks after three months remain sitting nobody uses them anymore they don't go stand they don't go between they the don't use stands. them anymore what people don't press the button anymore. Yeah, they just sit. Yeah, they, they just, just sit. sit. Oh, interesting. So it's not After that it got broken. Months, three months, people stop, stop, stop doing it. Interesting. And then you ask, there's an other studies that say, like you are, they, some other researchers ask, like, why? And essentially, it's apathy. It's apathy, yeah. Essentially. Interesting. Essentially. So we're actually designing a... What if the desk move? I mean, yeah, That's what if... That's exactly it, what we're doing. Oh, we yeah. just <laughs> created a desk that we call the haunted desk. It moves on its own. So <laughs> if you're apathetic about it, then the freaking thing is going to move up and down. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You shouldn't funny. be bothered. And we're running, you know, science behind that. You know, how do people do it? So far, what we notice is that people, just, it's kind of funny. You actually see the person typing and the desk starts going up and they <laughs> keep going with it. 
<laughs> and they keep oh, working and most yeah. of the time yeah. they don't complain yeah. there's some yeah. glitches here and there and there's like more research to be done but in general sure yeah why not that's so cool so yeah i'm very interested for example in desks that move i'm very interested in chairs i'm like yes, can yes. i make the chair uncomfortable uncomfortable after a while so you are like yeah. sitting there and after a while the chair starts like tweaking a little bit and then you feel like compelled to like move. Oh, to move your body. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh right. interesting. Just a tiny bit. So the uncomfortability yeah. will trigger movement. Yeah. Because otherwise the comfortability will trigger seat f f yes. sitting forever. Yes. I think we have to fight comfort. <laughs> That is interesting. I, I like the way you think. That's yeah. a very like contrarian yeah. thinking. Yeah, and, and you know, That's I mean, cool. uh, yeah, maybe it's my rebel you, nature. So but are you? Yeah. Are you? Do you mm. like decrease one of the sides of the chair or something? Yeah. yeah, we have actually a chair with four actuators in the legs. We can do anything we want. <laughs> we are very interested in a chair that stinks. A sinking chair. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. after a while, it starts stinking unless you take a break. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's interesting. So yeah, yeah. there is a little bit of like, you know, artistic exploration, but also some like hard rooted questions of behavior change. Like if you look at the literature of behavior change for a long time, we have been pounding on the possibility of like convincing people, persuading people to do things. And we're just not doing a great job. So I think we need to continue on that path and maybe look deeper, maybe mindsets. You know, there's some research about that from Ali Kram, very interesting. But I think we should also just get things moving and like force you to do. Like you go to the restroom and your chair's gone. Yeah. What happens? What then? happens? Then the uh, then then uh, then you stand and work. Maybe. Yeah. Or maybe you go for a walk. Maybe. maybe yeah. I mean, see, yeah. obviously, we are not going to go to the point that's going to hurt, crea uh, you creativity know, creativity or productivity course. or like. But I think people can tolerate these like changes yeah, yeah. in the environment. And it's also a little bit of a surprise. Yeah. It's really fun that you fun. Know, your chair is making a joke like that. Like, where yeah. did you go? Where did you go? Yeah. And the chair might be hiding behind hiding. the door, like, <laughs> yeah. like peeping. Like. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I don't know. I think, I think it sounds silly, and I think we should explore some silliness, but there is a little bit of value <laughs> on like, this exploration of the environment forcing you as a forcing function for you to do things. I agree. Yeah. 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 So now keep going in mm -hmm. the in the you, you know you're talking about furniture yeah. desks yeah. chairs yeah. Mm -hmm. um, what else but also yeah. you know you yeah. were also mentioning some interesting things like oh if the chair was yeah. on wheels and yeah. had some motors yeah. Yeah. and also had a camera yeah. on it right. well it could just move whenever you're yeah. not on yeah. it and then yeah. you could be like damn it where'd my yeah. chair go yeah. 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 all these interesting silly forces yeah or maybe it moves closer to the window so you can read with natural light as opposed to the the, the yeah. thing it basically says come sit here come sit here Right. Exactly. I mean, I think there's many possibilities. And I think there's many things that we can like look into. Like, you know, we have already chairs and desks and things. We have also peripherals. Like what the display. That? Display, yes. the keyboard, the mouse. These are very interesting devices. Mm -hmm. They yes, have they actually are. much more power than it looks like. Yeah. I'm actually very interested in, like, can I detect stress just by the way you use them? And I've been able to publish a paper on the move movement of oh. a mouse oh i was yeah. i was yeah. i was just about to say yeah. there's you can for sure yeah. detect stress yeah. by how hard someone sure. like when when yeah. you know oh when yeah, yeah pressure yeah and then someone's like oh yeah. i wish this was working you can yeah, yeah, yeah. click it multiple times oh, yeah, and yeah, really yeah, hard yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah we actually have a paper on that with a colleague javier hernandez we did that the cool. problem is that cool. normal five dollar cool. keyboards and five dollar mouse don't have pressure, pressure sensors, sensors yeah. but you, i don't need them i can actually detect by the way you move the mouse Interesting. Because when you get stressed, your muscles get tense. Yeah, yeah. And when they get tense, the way that you handle things changes. The trajectory changes. So you do exactly the same thing that you were doing under calm and under stress. And you see a slight change in the trajectory. And, and you can do math with that. Does that mean I'm m moving uh, l less calm? I'm a little like faster with the no it, that's the beauty it's not about the speed it's about the shape the, shape the precision of the shape of, of you landing it into, into the, that area yeah. oh interesting so maybe if i'm if i'm calmer i'm moving it directly to the point but if i'm agitated i might shoot over it's actually, it it that. It's actually no it's actually you become more precise with the stress actually you can be very, very precise that's why pre the stress is not necessarily a bad thing interesting it's actually something that's necessary you become a bit more precise if you get to a stress, then you start making mistakes. Okay, okay. But if you get the right amount of stress, you become a bit more precise, actually, okay. more efficient. 
So then, yeah, tell me more about so the So we use the movement of the mouse to basically detect stress chest by the way you move by creating a, a model of the arm, a mass spring damper model of the arm. So that's like a robotic model. Instead of doing machine learning, trying to infer things, we literally propose that, you know, if I can look at the data from the movement, I can create some equations to model what will be a resonating um, an oscillator. So an oscillator has a spring and a mass. So we model that from the arm and we say like the muscles are like springs. They basically mm -hmm. contract and, and strike. When they get tense, mm -hmm. they basically are resonating at a different uh, frequency. And we mm. prove that mm. mathematically. Oh. So we were able to show oh, that basically with movement, I can infer the amount of stiffness in stiffness. the arm. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. And, and we actually okay. validated that also in the car. That's another space I'm very interested in, the, the car. car. Okay. I've been doing a lot of research in the car. We actually extended this idea of movement, mm -hmm. and we did it with a steering wheel. Yes. So we basically got you stressed under, uh, you know, and then calm and drive. Mm -hmm. uh, everything else kept equal. We've shown that, you know, with stress, the way you take the turns is, again, a little bit more precise. And that's basically expressed in a mass spring damper, and you can show the, the coefficient of, like, rigidity. And you can uh, basically infer the amount of stiffness due to stress in the arm. Oh, oh, yeah as driving or also mouse. Or on a mouse. Yeah, so, so yeah. I'm very interested, that's like, cool. you know, in the car you have more sensors. You have the steering wheel, you have this beautiful sensor for, for, the, uh, for the legs. Yeah. You have your body against another potential sensor of posture and all that. Yeah. So you can get a lot of pretty cool information from a car. And to be very honest, I'm not, it's not the car that fascinates me. It's the commute that fascinates me. Yes. The commute is amazingly interesting. Yeah. It's this moment in the day when you're moving from a high productivity environment to a very much like relaxation environment. Yeah. And you should go with that flow. You should go there and basically feel better. But many, many people don't happen to have that luxury. They go from stress to more stress. And they fight their way through to try to sleep. And they have poor quality sleep. And the commute's not helping much. The commute is basically just this link between these two places without adding value. And many times actually exacerbating yeah. because of all the factors of like driving. And it basically what I think is that that moment can be used to like, can we, we can repurpose the commute from a bug into a feature. Yeah, yeah. And the reason I'm all interested in the commute is not just because of that situation, it's because it is the right moment to do it. It's the moment when you're moving from these envir two environments. It's an important yes, moment in yes. the day. You want to make sure that yeah. the, the mood, the well-being, yeah. the, yeah. the health yeah. is high yeah. when they're in this commuting time Correct. When they, I want that by the time they have done commuting, they are in the right state of mind. They should be much calmer if they're going home, and they should be much alert, much more alert if they're coming from yeah. home to work. Work, yeah, interesting. Yeah, such that you know you deliver the person in the right state, state of mind. State of mind, interesting. And then the other thing also about the commute that's very interesting is that you know it happens twice a day. Yes. Every day. Yeah. For 50 million Americans, they spend about an hour. So there's a lot of people doing this thing. Yeah. And I used to tell this to my colleague psychiatrists. I'm like, you know, you, you know, playing the jokes about the sofas, you know, we always refer to the psychiatry the sofa. sofa. It's yeah. like the sofa that you really want is the sofa in the car. Because now you have the person trapped. They get in the car and they move. They cannot even get out of this place. So the place where you can really intervene is in the car while you're commuting. You have them captive. They're captive in the car. Yeah. And it happens twice a day. Yeah. What would be the variables mm -hmm. that you would tweak yeah. on the way to work, yeah. on the way yeah. back Yeah, so we, we are actually already publishing papers on that. It's, I'm very interested with breathing rate. Breathing. That's the first one. Yeah. There's many aspects to breathing, and in this conference especially, there's like a lot of people thinking very carefully about breathing. Yes. I'm very interested in the chest getting people to breathe slowly. Mm. Like, you know, for most people doing diaphragmatic, these complicated advanced techniques, it's just difficult to, to acquire. Breathing slowly, everybody can. Mm -hmm. Now, sustaining the uh, slow breath is a bit more difficult, so we created a chair that has, like, imagine a bunch of, like, a massage, uh, a haptic massage interaction in the back. It's like a bunch of motors that basically 
and give you a signal that goes up and then it goes down and that sequence is linked to your breathing rate so essentially it asks you to follow the sequence for you to like start breathing at the same pace and then we reduce the speed of the breathing and then people start breathing slowly we reduce it by 30 percent and not only that, the beauty is that during that time we measure all the performance indicators like, you know, lane keeping and like heart breaking and there weren't a major distortions, anything that will have a affected safety. So you can do the same thing you're doing, but less stress. Because you because are you're breathing, breathing slower. slower and you're helping them breathe slower on the way back home through yeah. a through the back. The back of the chair, chair. has, yeah, these uh, actuators and that actuator, give, yeah. And that it rises up. Exactly. And then it, and it, then then it goes, goes down. down. Yeah. Interesting, so then you you f na you follow your breath to that physical You follow feeling. the breath to that physical. And there's many good properties of putting it on the, on the back. Well, the main one is that people basically say it's less cognitive demanding than anything. You know, people tried it with lights, <coughs> with voices, like no, just with this simple massage in the back. Back is works, yes. And then the other thing that they like a lot about the interaction was that they actually can drive and if they want to do a maneuver of some sort at some point, they can always disengage just like... A little bit. A little bit, do the thing and then like... Go back in. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. What about on the way to work? Yeah, Aki, that, that's the other question. Like, what do we do in the way to work? I would say I would, I've been focusing more on the winding down part right yes. now. But yes. there is the way to work and I think... At, uh, increasing attention and focus. Maybe like the smell of coffee? Smell will be very interesting. I'm actually talking to a startup around here that has this like more dry method of generating smells on demand. Uh -huh. And we're very interested in using something like that to generate alertness. I think breathing also can be used, but in this case it will be breathing faster. So if I get you to breathe slightly faster, interesting. I can actually get you more aroused. It works both ways. That and we actually cool. have a small paper where we investigated, can we use fast breathing, fast-paced breathing for um, fatigue? You know, again, it was more at the end of the day. But I think in the morning, it's similar. You're like still a bit drowsy waking up. Breathe a bit faster. Yeah. Posture will also help. Posture, like yeah. the right posture in oh, the seat. Totally. Yeah, even, yeah. If you even, even, even if you change right now yeah, and that, move that, your shoulders that, back, that already make you feel better. So yeah. we're actually working, uh, talking to a very um, interesting company that built, you know, car car seat makers. The companies that make car seats are actually pretty big companies. That's amazing, like billion, multi billion, multi billion dollars. Because they make hundreds the of millions of yeah seats. and the seat is a very important piece of piece car, of car. very yeah. important yes, piece. Yes. so they uh, they're very they they are very interested in blending the three things that we just discussed some posture mm -hmm. some potential guided mm -hmm. breathing and maybe some scent element scent as well interesting yeah to get basically the the engagement to be not just the level of arousal up, but also a little bit of like have the pleasant feeling which basically puts you in a good mood. Wow. Yeah. The, the, I, this fi so 50 million in just the U.S. commute. Just the U.S. Oh, one oh, yeah, hour yeah. a day. A day. And, and, that, that, and that's huge. Like you said, yeah. you're, you're, you're right. trapped in the car. Yeah. You are literally trapped. <laughs> so there's so much you can do to, make the, <laughs> yeah. to do the preparation yeah. for work yeah. better. Yeah. The preparation for home for better. For home as well. Because I also remember, I wanted yeah. to mention this, when you come home, yeah. A lot of your uh, happiness when you come yeah. home is in your family, at yeah. least if you're yeah. with a family, yeah. is based on the way you first treat your significant other when you come home. So if you have an elevated mood an when you come home and you, and you give that loving energy to your spouse, it changes the rest of the evening. The whole evening. Yeah, yeah. Completely agree. That's why I think that the delivering of the individual at the end of the trajectory of the commute is extremely valuable. Because I agree with you, it's the first interactions that happen at home and at work that set the tone of the whole experience. Yeah. So if we can make that, the first impression, better, even though it's a repeated impression every day, but the first interaction better, I completely agree with you. It will have a difference. And not only that, there's some science that show that, but yeah. yeah, if there's like a couple of exchange of like a loving exchange or like a smile at least, yes. the whole, the rest of the evening flows. Yes.
Maybe you come and like, oh my God, you know, this day, and like, what did you do? I, I have no time right now. The, the whole evening. At least a little, like, less I, at least yeah. a little, like, I love yeah. you. I had a complicated Something, day at exactly, work. Exactly, but, but at least you are. But yeah. I'm happy to see you. Yeah, 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 it helps. I mean, yeah. people will say, well, you can do, you can train yourself to do that. And then it comes a, diff a third concept that I'm very interested in. Uh, yeah. Recent, actually, talking to Nicole here, the... Uh -huh made me realize there's this, we, in science we talk a lot about uh, sensors and interventions, right? We sense something and then we do something about it, intervention. Mm -hmm. There's the, for me, this pre-intervention phase. You prepare the person to have an intervention. So let's say the intervention is right. this loving conversation, yeah, yeah. which is actually well documented called the constructive, active constructive talking. Mm -hmm. If you're not in the right mood, I yeah. will <laughs> kind of give you a low probability of your engaging in active constructive. Totally. So I might not necessarily need to like change the dynamic completely by, by getting you in the best mood. I just prepare you such that you adhere to the other intervention, which is the conversational active conversation. So I use the commute as a preparation exactly. for a more profound intervention yes, yes. happening at home. I, and, and so now where... I like how you're how you're mm -hmm. making this mm -hmm. sit because you're making it sit with the you you have a huge intention so even before the intervention you have the intention to prepare the person for it. Correct. So then where else can this be used? I mean the commute's a good one home the yeah. commute to yeah. work's a good one. I mean this can be used in preparation Anywhere. for so much like so yeah. much. I think we should be researching very actively in this topic. For example, one anecdotal experience I had, no, no, no scientific anecdotal, is I'm a mm, quite s explosive, like, you know, passionate individual, as mm -hmm. you might maybe infer. Mm -hmm. And I used to work in business, and I used to have these issues. I used to work in marketing in the ninth floor, and engineering was on the second floor of this building in Ecuador. And sometimes they really did something that, like, upset me greatly. I used to take the elevator, come out shouting, like, how do you dare to have done this to this client? It's just, you know, very bad. Then I realized that, you know, instead of taking the elevator, I should take the stairs. So now I have seven steps, seven floors, and I did it a bit faster. So I did exert. I went to the same place. It took me one more minute, but my mood was different. Yeah. When I arrived there, I wasn't, at, I was still sharp, ready to say what I wanted to say, but not with the same bitterness that I did with the other one. That, for example, these transitions, for you to like go and communicate with people, I think you should use those transitions yeah. to prepare yourself to engage in a more active, even if it's like a more difficult conversation, you can prepare to that by exerting a little bit, by maybe taking a longer route, by just like, you know, maybe taking a coffee, like yeah. don't just go. Yeah, there's, there's yeah. something, <clears throat> I think with, especially, you know, the work that I've done now with Tony Robbins, with with priming, um, and there's a lot of yeah, other priming. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of other uh, wellness yeah. coaches and life mm -hmm. coaches that help mm -hmm. with this uh, essence of priming. Yeah, it's just that you know you're priming for priming for your uh, for a deep conversation with your right. partner. Well, get into your heart and l yeah. give the love. Give the love. Yes. If yes. when I was going to give the yeah. TEDx talk in, yeah. in October in San Francisco, yeah. I was like, yes. yeah, I was getting <laughs> super ready, and I was also yeah, grounding yeah. myself. I was yeah, going yeah. You know, on both sides <laughs> of that, and so like oscillating. Uh, yeah, very oscillating cool. between yeah, those yeah, two. Yeah. And so that, yeah. that really got me into, yeah. into, the, into the stage yeah. and, and, um, for yeah. me. So, there's, so what I love, I love the idea of priming mm. yeah. um, and preparing, yeah. for, preparing the intervention. for the intervention. Yeah. That's so cool. But systemically, right? Systemically. That, that's the part where I think we need science. Like how do we really measure yeah. the outcome such that I know that you're ready to take their intervention and use it and adhere and adopt it. Otherwise, it's just random search. We could use like machine learning random search and maybe that's a good way to start, you know, like just testing what happens. But systemically ask the question, can we create experiences that are conducive to more adherence and adoption of an intervention? Can we do it? And what yeah. does that mean? Yes, yes. And, and I would be very interested to just know which, which ones would you want? Like which yeah. interventions yeah. would you find yeah. to be the first ones that you would yeah. want to start studying? Yeah. Right. 
Well, I mean, I, I, I'm pretty. I'm having a lot of fun right now with the car and furniture. I think uh, behaviors that have to do with mobility. Mobility. Mobility is extremely interesting. I'm yeah. fascinated with many effect, many things that have to do with mobility. First of all, I think the body is the ultimate like stimulation uh, system for the brain. Brains yeah. are connected to bodies. We sense we have multiple connections. I think we should. As much as we progress on the part of like meditation, we should progress in, in the art of like using your body. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. my gosh! Yeah. You know Ido yeah. Portal. Mm -hmm. um, he taught me about yeah. the. Uh, he showed me how yeah. you know the reptile mm -hmm. moves on the ground yeah. and stuff, right. and how humans. Yeah. If we, I started crawling oh, basically yeah. really on the ground to test, <laughs> to test it out. Yeah, oh, very I cool. literally yeah. started like serpenting <laughs> around on the ground on right. all fours. Yeah, yeah. And it, op I hear my hips go, oh, you know, yeah. oh, opens up my whole right. body. Yeah, it feels amazing. Yeah, no, I think movement is fascinating. Like, there's so many things about movement. Like, you know. The problem is that we, we, we tend to go to streams all the time. That's why I, I, in my talk I was talking about subtle interventions. I want subtle movement. Subtle movement. Subtle. Yeah. But constantly assessing it and constantly encouraging it. Like, you know, we think we're too binary. We're like, go from sitting to running. And everything in between seems like not count almost. Like, it's not true. And now we know better. There's better signs that show, like, how, they, how do they say, uh, the best state is the next one, right? It's mm. always keeping moving. Mm -hmm. So, you know, subtle movement. For example, can we do something chest by stretching? Like stretching is whatever. Can we get yeah. the chair to guide you to stretch? Yeah. Breathing is also movement. Can we, yeah. for example, use rocking? Rocking is a very nice way of breathing. You sit on a rocking chair and you feel yeah. kind of like relaxed. Oh, yeah. Like, can we induce that in a, in a car, in an office chair? In can office we make chair, it yeah. a rocking office chair? Why not? We used to have so many more yeah. rocking chairs when our, with our grandparents. Yeah, and now where, where are, are they? Where are the rocking chairs? Because we have no time to sit in them. So, okay, so the, again, so now let's put them in the office then. Let's yeah. rock. And, 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 you know, it's actually interesting because we actually, with the chair that I mentioned that we built, we have been exploring actually not just the opportunity of relaxation, but actually the opportunity to engage in more like attention and focus. And again, we don't have uh, scientific findings yet, but uh, we have tested this with several people. We have a chair that moves, that literally moves from side to side programmatically. And those who actually describe themselves are very fidgety, they love this chair, like yeah, me. I yeah. sit on that. And the chair is shaking mm. me, and I am actually still able working. to like do stuff. And the not mobility. only still, it actually focuses, focuses me, kind of like yeah. relaxes. It, it it's no, it like flashes my need to move. Yeah. Now those who are very stable naturally, yeah. they are, they don't like it. They're like, no, keep my chair stable. Don't yeah. shake it. And so I think it's not for everybody. But for example, movement might be very useful for some people. And I've been researching about this, and there's actually some kindergartens that they are using these unstable stools. For ADHD kids, yeah, you, you, to keep them those unstable. balance yeah. balls, are, balance balls, are or other fun. tools that look uh, kind of like a cone. cone. Yeah, those are good. I love uh, for mm -hmm. some when you're when you're when you were talking about yeah. having very slight movements from side to side yeah. while working. Yeah. For me, that sounds exciting. It's very cool. Yeah, it's very cool. Super good. The other the other part of, of the body that you know, I'm um, interesting is the whole proprioception. And the whole, like, you know, you're burning sensation. calories when you're yeah. doing this. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Cause Very cool. You, yeah. I mean, I'm moving my, <laughs> yeah, my shoulders, my right. triceps, my biceps. You do, you do. It's you all burn. my lower back. I is mean, let's say moving. I get you moving, you know, one or two hours out of the eight that you're just sitting there, uh, you will burn something. You'll burn something. But then, and then day by day by stiff. day by day. Yeah. I bet we wouldn't be as stiff. Yeah. That's fair. And the cool. other thing also is like, again, it's about preparation. If you've been a bit more active, during the day, the possibility of you engaging in more exertive activities, like more more exercise, at the end, it's, I think it should go up. Because you're not going from like potato couch but straight to run. Exactly, yeah. you're level yeah. up from you there. You level up a little bit. Yeah. And you're like, I feel loose. I want to yeah. go f do yeah. some active. Yeah. Right. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, this is so cool. Yeah. You know what, I'm, I'm envisioning, hmm. I'm envisioning, you know, the. I'm envisioning these very futuristic furnitures. I'm envisioning like me going to the bathroom and then the chair being by the window <laughs> when I come back and I'm like, yeah, yeah, okay, I'll move okay, my, I'll yeah. go over there for a bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm yeah, envisioning yeah. the commute in yeah. the car to yeah. like, you know, yeah. like 
increase my breath yeah. all right. the way home yeah. and yeah. and and uh, get me more prepared right. for a loving yeah. engagement on yeah. my way home. You know, I love how you think about all yeah. this. It's very very mm -hmm. Im important and futuristic and mm -hmm. and we have we actually there's a lot of people at like um at like CCA, the California College of the Arts up in San Francisco. Very much so. make all of this. I know, I know. There's some people, actually yeah. one of my co-advisors in my postdoc was Wendy Ju, professor okay. who now is in Cornell Tech. She has these beautiful ideas around like robotics. I just, the best robots I've seen have come from her head. I think, Sweet. you know, she changed, because all these robots that look like humans and anthropomorphic, those are a fantasy of, you know, us as humans to pro pro project ourselves. She's like, we have to like get, make an Ottoman that's a robot. So you're like sitting there and the Ottoman comes and like offers it himself or herself to basically give you relief. So she's comes and you raise your things and the Ottoman goes in. Oh, that's that, a cool robot. Because right? that, all, that'll de that decompresses yeah. your back. Yeah, that's you a cool robot, can, you know? Yeah. Or like uh, yeah. she also has these others, the, um, the garage uh, cans, the, the garbage cans. Oh, it comes to you. Like, not only comes to you, comes to you and shakes it like like a <laughs> like a dog shakes it and you're like oh yeah you throw the, the trash that's great that's the type of robots i find we should be thinking more of in general i like yeah, that this a lot. type yeah. of this type of robotics i think what well, we really need to invest more as opposed to like just trying to replicate ourselves so yeah I think we should like play with the things that are around us. Yeah. Now maybe the maybe the light is yeah. uh, is decreasing in the room that you're in. Yeah. So maybe the, mm -hmm. the light comes on in the room. Maybe. Or yeah, lights were also very interested. I mean, we haven't uh, done a lot, but lights are very. The other concept that I'm very interested interested. So complementary to the de the desk is what I call non volitional intervention. So I'm forcing you to do things like literally by reconfiguring yeah. the environment. I'm forcing you. Yeah to adopt a different behavior. Would you call it a non? Non-volitional. Non-volitional. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So you don't do it with your own volition. No, you, you are forced, forced to, to do, do it. it. Cool. Okay. Whatever that means in terms of, like, I'm not going to get into like ethics or that. that. That's another conversation. That's a different conversation. Yeah. And, but, and yeah. if it's better for yeah. your health, if it's, yeah. Anyway. I think, I yeah. think we should explore it. Yes, and the yes. other one is <coughs> subliminal. Subliminal. How do I get you to change certain aspects of your life without you even perceiving it? Like literally without even perceiving it. Interesting. So I'm very interested. Right now I'm working with a display that actually generates a signal, changes the hue of the display. Yeah. Not the brightness, the, the hue, hue. In a very subtle way, such that you may not even perceive it. Yeah. Because it's actually working, operating in one part of your visual perception that's very like linear, very almost like saturated. So your visual cortex perceives the changes, but you don't. So you're w typing an email, uh -huh. you see the same thing, but your the background of the of the email is changing, and we generate the right frequency to induce certain changes in your brain, that is like cool. gamma entrainment exactly. or yeah. like yeah. delta. Et yeah. So we can generate the frequencies with a display, the same display that you use to write the email. Right. Now, we'll, I mean, just yeah. to s just to yeah. explore that for a moment, yeah. if I'm looking at the display yeah. and the display is mm -hmm. the, the LEDs yeah. are what what are what are you doing with the LEDs? Because is it like a yeah. is it like a couple millisecond is it doing yeah. something? Very short. Very short. So to the point yeah. where it doesn't even look like yeah. I'm yeah. seeing a change yeah. in right. the screen. Correct. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. And then that can potentially in, in train a uh, potentially induce, induce we what there's 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 uh, empirical empirical evidence that we need yeah. but yeah could increase flow states and stuff potentially yeah. wow this is so cool I'm really yeah. happy that you're doing everything that you're exploring you're like you're like a how can I explain you you're like a uh, you're you what what would be the following word a cre <laughs> a, a cre Maybe like a creative environments designer, something like that. Yes, yeah, environments like that. designer, something like that. Yeah, yeah creative, creative, yeah. healthy environments. Healthy yeah. environments, yeah, yeah creative, yeah. healthy environments. I want to cool. create an ecology of like, I, th I think our environment should have, we should give more life to our things. Uh, you know, we yeah. talk about ecologies outside. We don't have an ecology anymore because we're actually on the top of the food chain. So no, but there's no more like interactions with other species. The interactions are all fake and regulated. Yeah. And we used to live on the prairie with all the interactions with like bacteria and animals. Now we live here, here, this, the environment, it's this. Yeah. So our environment should 
take life. It should be more like adaptive and interplaying with you. He could even play yeah. practical jokes to you. Why not? Like, it's like you're coming and your chair is like <laughs> hiding, but your desk is like, I'm not going up. Yeah, yeah. Those are good jokes. And then what happens? Then you These just laugh for a while. Laughter yeah. is extremely good extremely for you. Extremely good for you. Yeah. Anyways, That's I think, funny. I if think we should like came, yeah. came and shaked and then when he threw it, it yeah. moved out of the way. Exactly. That would, <laughs> <laughs> that would be a great practical. You're like, oh, what are you doing? Yeah. And then you force them to, <laughs> to bend. <laughs> Anyways, I think at the end yeah. of the day, what I want to bring more like dynamism to our like a yeah. rather stale uh, environment, the real in the wild thing. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> what a, what a pleasure right. this has uh, been. It was my pleasure. Yeah. Man. Oh my Thank gosh. This yeah. has been so enlightening. <laughs> um, uh, it's a very, it's so much different. You're like the only person at TransTech that's mm. doing this, mm. which I, mm. that, that I've met so far that yeah. I really like. Yeah. It's very different. It's yeah. very, and I love things that <laughs> are very different. Yeah. Um, from the cultural norms, very Copernicus-y, you know? <laughs> I love it. Yeah, I love it. yeah I'm, I'm glad I have the opportunity to explore it. Yeah, yeah, very happy. Thank you for yeah. teaching us thank about you. it. We'll have yeah. some links in the bio for yeah. you guys to check out. Um, also, uh, go, thank you for tuning in. If you guys want, give us some comments below with your thoughts. Let's keep making fun ideas like this about mm -hmm. how exactly we can change our environments to make them yeah. more creative, more dynamic, more movement, more well-being. Um, we'd love to hear from you. Also, go and build the future. Go manifest your dreams into the world, everyone. Thank you so much, and we'll see you soon. Peace. Very cool. Thank you, Alan. That was fun. That was so <laughs> fun. I love Good. learning about you.